Say the words notorious and boxing in the same sentence and you'll probably think of Tyson Fury. The two-time world heavyweight champion seldom gets boxers to agree to matches against him. But when he does, shocking things ensue. So what was the recent match against Deontay Wilder like for Fury? Where does he go from here? And why exactly do boxers hate boxing against Tyson Fury? Keep watching for all those juicy details. Let's begin. Why couldn't Fury face Anthony Joshua? Back in May, Fury was quite excited for the ultimate all-British showdown against fellow boxer Anthony Joshua. The match was set to take place in August in Saudi Arabia, but Fury's hopes came crashing down when he realized that a match against the fellow heavyweight champion was no longer on the table. So what helped Joshua avoid the Gypsy King? It was actually a court ruling that came out in May this year. The ruling made it clear that Fury had more pressing things to see to before he could have the fight he actually wanted. And yes, those things were mainly a third match against his arch rival Deontay Wilder. The ruling did seem to hit Fury, but he didn't back down. Keeping to his reputation for being annoyingly extroverted on social media, it only took Fury a fraction of a second to get to his Instagram and speak his mind. He said on his story, what a joke Bronze Bomber has become. Asked for 20 million to move over, Joker. Looks like I have to crack his skull again. His post actually came after Fury made it clear to the world just how stoked he was for the upcoming fight. Poor guy was 100% sure that the fight was on and just couldn't wait to absolutely smash Joshua. But there are more to this change of plans. Keep watching to find out. But first, let's look at the events of the recent Fury vs. Wilder showdown. The Bronze Bomber vs. the Gypsy King. What happened and why? After being defeated for the second time in February last year, Deontay the Bronze Bomber just couldn't wait to avenge the humiliation Fury has brought once and for all. In the final match of a truly blockbuster trilogy between and the two fighters, Fury once again brought it right on. In the 11th round, Fury was declared the undisputed winner of the match. Throughout the game, Wilder was floored thrice, while Fury himself came crashing down over the canvas twice during the fourth round of the match. One of those moments actually invited some controversy for Fury. Let's have a look. What does Joe Rogan think? Fans already had their doubts, but UFC commentator and podcaster Joe Rogan went ahead and actually questioned Fury's win against Deontay. His concern was mainly about one of the two times Fury was floored by his opponent during the fourth round, where he said that the referee Russell Moore gave Fury a slower count than he normally does. This is what the famous podcaster termed as corruption during the match, which resulted in Fury's win. The count could have been slowed because of an interruption that Moore Mora chose to address first. As he began his count, he noticed Fury's opponent to have left his corner, told him to return to his corner, and then continued counting again. Rogan explained the whole thing too. He said, the referee's supposed to go one, two, when the guy goes down. But if for any reason he has to interrupt the count, you're supposed to pick up the count where the ringside counter is, has it. So there's a guy who's counting ringside, and he'll keep the count going. So if you're out one, two, and then you're like, go to a neutral corner, that guy's supposed to be like three, four, five, but he didn't. He went back to it. Three, four, but the guy had already been down for a couple seconds. Without a doubt, it was a long count. Rogan then went on to say how this could both be an error or corruption, and then sided with it being an error. But needless to say, he wasn't the only one who's noticed the moment and objected to it. Daniel Cormier, the former UFC heavyweight champion, also expressed his doubts. Why can't boxers stand being in the ring with Fury? Those were just two examples where where Fury has been met with controversy. There's a lot of time to unpack here, so don't go anywhere. Let's start with Wilder himself, since we didn't really touch on the kind of relationship he's had with Fury over the years. The Fury versus Wilder rivalry. Back when Joshua came to Oksandr Usyk this year, Fury was absolutely wounded, since he was hoping for Joshua to claim the win, but he took the moment then, too, to say how much he was absolutely crushed Deontay Wilder. So what has caused the two to have such questionable feelings for each other? So much so that they feel the need to crush one another no matter what it takes? Well, it's normal for boxers to not be exactly friendly towards the ones they punch and get punched by in the ring. But Wilder and Fury have taken their hostility to another level. What with the uncountable jabs that they land on each other both inside and outside the ring. It all started on the fine day of January 16th, 2016. That was the day when Wilder brutally knocked out Artur Spitka in the ninth round in Brooklyn. That was also the day when Fury unexpectedly showed up to the arena and crashed the ring and challenged Wilder to a fight. A minor skirmish also took place, but it was nothing that shocking. Then for the next two years, Wilder kept 
facing stiff opponents and made headlines with some amazing performances. Same can't be said about Fury as he took the back seat and decided to leave boxing for a while to deal with mental health issues and infrequent substance abuse. But Fury had returned by the 18th of April 2018 and was up to 400 pounds. His first match against Wilder ended in a goosebump inducing split draw. Second fight took place in 2020 and the trilogy was completed recently. What's the reason for Fury's notoriety as a social media user? The Wilder rivalry has never been only an in-ring matter for Fury. The Briton has often made it a point of discussion and even more a point to gain some retweets about how he sees the American. He's posted all sorts of things against the Bronze Bomber from trolling him to telling them that he would outright break his skull. That's one of the biggest reasons why boxers hate coming face to face with Fury because not only he tries his best to defeat them inside the ring but also obliterate them in the social media fight. He's often been seen thrashing his opponents and being overall vocal online about different boxing matters. He also commented on the Anthony Taylor and Jake Paul situation that took place recently. Then of course Fury is a total beast during fights as well. Who knew Fury could actually have a chance against the longest reigning heavyweight champion Vladimir Klitschko? Who could have seen that coming? But Fury made it a reality even where odds were against him. In a blockbuster match, Fury was the unanimous winner who had made everyone bow down before his sheer determination. There's no doubt that he's one of the strongest contenders in the world of boxing right now. He arguably may also have won the two titles in line for him had he not gone on the hiatus back in 2016. So everything considered, Fury is definitely one of the toughest opponents a boxer could have. That's probably why they flinch away from fights against him. The recent trilogy win against Wilder is just proof of this thing where another great boxer is made to kneel down before Fury's glory. This will go down as one of the greatest fights in boxing history and to think Fury pulled that in minimal time should understandably be on some boxers. Beyond Wilder, what's next for Fury? Regarding what Fury's future will look like, we have a few leads. Remember last month when Fury said that he'll next face Dylan White before his match with Anthony Joshua next year? That very much seems like a possibility, but would White agree to it? Previous experiences of Fury should give him at least a little lack of clarity on who's going to be his next target. We don't really know if such a fight is actually going to happen, but it was definitely interesting to thinking about how Fury will tackle the WBC interim champion. But then that at least gives us some certainty that Fury will finally get his fight against Joshua in the coming year. Certainly exciting to finally get the match that just won't stop delaying and finally seeing an exclusively British event where two insanely talented Brits take it upon themselves to be declared the better one of the two. That's all about today's video. What are your opinions on Fury as a fighter and the recent match against Deontay Wilder? Comment your thoughts below and make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Also subscribe to our channel. See you next time.